Hello everyone, my name is Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, welcome to the channel. Dauntless Patch 1.7.3 releases tomorrow, and in today's video you guys will be getting a sneak peek into all of the action of the patch. We'll be taking a look at the new hunting grounds, the new hunt pass, the repeater refresh, and the new omni cell called Tempest. There are so many good new things, I don't even really know where we should begin. Even going down to some of the cosmetic items that are being added to the platinum store, this update is is pretty darn good. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoy, and if you enjoy Dauntless and are not subscribed already, consider subscribing to the channel. I post Dauntless content here every week. And head over to the Twitch, the link is in the description. I will be over there as soon as the new patch is live tomorrow, and we will be giving away multiple hunt passes throughout the day. And if you are considering buying the new hunt pass or making any type of purchase through Dauntless or Epic Games, consider using my creator code, the Mr. Trails. Make sure the A is before the I. But let us begin, and we will start off with the new hunting grounds, the Blazeworks. You will be able to unlock the Blazeworks hunting grounds at the end of the Slayer's Path. The Blazeworks is going to serve as a bit of a challenge area of the hunting grounds, which will now be the home to the highest level behemoths. Behemoths will spawn from levels 21 to 24 on this island, so expect a bit of a challenge. But that challenge is rewarded to the tune of bonus experience as well as bonus Aether Sparks from events. The island is a very, very heavily modified version of Brightwood, and its main features are a notable industrial feel. Pollution is very apparent on this island, as there are waste barrels everywhere, a lake of toxic goop, and even some chimney stacks on the island. There are some key landmarks, including a middle tower and platform that will definitely be important for something later, as well as several doors to an underground researching facility. You'll even find a a couple of guards posted outside of one of these doors, which makes these some of the few people that can be found on an actual island in the game, joining Granny Strega, Zelia the Far Slayer, and Linnea Silver from the Mission Hunts. The description of the island states that the Ostian Imperials have a burning secret on this island that they will do anything to keep. The naturally spawning behemoths in the Blazeworks are Heroic Koshai, Shroud, Heroic Scorchstone Hellion, Heroic Bloodfire Embermane, and Sports struck Charog. None of the behemoths are guaranteed on this island though. The bonus weapon experience is pretty important to the feel of this island, as you'll likely find these behemoths will commonly take over a minute or two each to defeat. I would recommend bringing either a shock weapon or a frost weapon to the Blazeworks, as those are the favorable elemental matchups. Next up, let's talk about the new Tempest Omnicell. This Omnicell has changed a bit, being known as the Wind Fury Omnicell in the initial round of testing, however it still capitalizes on movement speed in build making. Tempest will be unlockable on the Slayer's Path, next to Bastion and Iceborne. Its passive ability will grant you 10% attack speed, as well as every time you dodge an attack, you'll gain a stack of velocity. Each velocity stack will increase your movement speed by 3%, capping out at 5 stacks. The activation ability will consume a stack of velocity, making you dash forward, dealing 400 damage, which is prioritized to unbroken parts. But there's more. For every 1% increase you have to your movement speed, you'll gain 5% bonus damage against unbroken parts from the ability. And this becomes interesting, as it means a 20% increase to movement speed is a 100% increase to the damage of the ability. The cooldown on the tap ability is 4 seconds, but you do need to make sure that you have stacks of velocity to be able to use it. Velocity stacks will last for 40 45 seconds, and each time you dodge through an attack or use the activation ability of the Omnicell, the duration of the stacks are refreshed. The role that the Tempest Omnicell is going to be able to fill is if you want an offensively focused Omnicell, but you don't want to limit your healing capabilities like the Discipline Omnicell. Speaking of which, the Discipline Omnicell is getting a slight nerf in this patch, getting the crit damage added per Discipline stack cut down to 4%, as well as the base damage of the punch move is being reduced to 200. However, remember that you still gain that bonus damage whenever you actually parry an attack. I would think the main reason for the crit damage reduction per stack is to further incentivize you to get to four stacks of discipline as soon as you can and not to hold on to your extra stacks longer than you have to. Moving along now to the repeater refresh. The main thing that is notable about the repeater changes is the crafting. Repeaters will now be crafted in the same way as the other weapons.
weapons. This means we will lose out on the modularity of the repeaters. However, it also means that we now have unique effects for every behemoth on the repeaters. Most of the unique effects are as you would expect them to be, but a very notable, interesting one in my opinion are the Stormclaw repeaters. When you dodge through an attack, you'll gain a fully empowered reload to max ammo, and it was pretty cool to mess around with. In addition to the crafting changes, just about everything with the standard style repeaters received base damage increases. The base damage of the regular shots increased from 80 to 100, and the base damage from the empowered shots rose from 125 to 175. The Marksman Chamber received a damage buff as well, going from 250 to 350 when empowered. However, the more notable thing for the Marksman Chamber is that unbroken parts will now receive additional core damage. Previously, parts that weren't broken would only take extra part damage. However, now the parts will take both part and extra core damage at the same time. The Salvo Chamber's empowered base damage went up by 50, and the empowered full bore chamber shot will now deal three times the base damage of the non-empowered full bore chamber, up from 2.5 times. Most of the weapon mods remained the same though, only getting two real changes. Capacitive Magazine will now restore 8 ammo instead of 4, and Demolition Sights will now deal 50% bonus damage against everything but Behemoths pretty much, and 100% bonus damage when empowered. Another rather major change that kind of goes hand in hand with a repeater refresh is updates that were made to the camera system of the game. The camera distance and camera FOV sliders have been given numerical values, but more importantly is that they have a secondary camera mode slider now called aim mode. Aim mode will let you control your camera vision while having the repeaters unsheathed, and when they are sheathed you'll have your regular camera settings. The main point being you can now give yourself a rather large field of view when running the repeaters. They've also updated the reticle for the repeaters, and it actually shows you how your damage falloff is working. If you have a small red reticle, you're dealing a very low percentage of the damage that you could be, and when you have a large red reticle, you're dealing the full amount of damage. The other main gameplay changes that are happening are the Iceborne activation ability and the Urska legendary ability are being changed from item type damage to special type damage, meaning that the perks in your build are going to affect how much damage they deal. Additionally, Fleet Footed is now going to be active for 10 seconds, and this actually makes its case for the best mobility cell to use for the Tempest Omni Cell. And finally, the Rezakiri weapons are going to be getting a slight buff, now getting a 12% chance when power surged for attacks to hit twice. However, when the weapons are not power surged, it will only be an 8% chance. Moving on now to the most important news of them all, the fashion news. 1.7.3 also brings with it the new Ostagard Justice Hunt Pass, as well as some new additions to the reward cache. Starting off with the Hunt Pass, at level 1 we have the Big Chair Emote. At level 5 we have the Otex C2 Honor Guard Chestplate. At level 10, we have the High Roller Hairstyle. At level 15, we have the Sanctified Die. At level 16, we have the Imperial Seal of Ostigard Banner Sigil, and at level 30, we have the Ostigard Battle Flag Banner Fabric. At level 20, we have the Imperial Seal of Ostigard Flare. At level 25, we have the Otex A2 Reverent Action Gauntlets Transmog. At level 35, we have the Otex LT1 Shining Force Lantern. At level 40, we have the Otex L2 Loyal Foundation Boots. And at level 50, we have the Ultra Armor of the Hunt Pass, including the EXRAC Lord Triumphant's Wisdom Chestplate, the Otex H2 Obedient Purpose Helmet, the EX1 ARA The Commodore's Command Gloves, and the EX1 RAL High Chamberlain's Grace Boots. I swear, Phoenix Labs just made these armor names like this, so I would have a hard time reading them. Moving on to the Reward Cache fashion, which has much friendly names. New to the reward cache is the Enforcer's Armor Set, sporting the Enforcer's Impact Plate, Enforcer's Blast Helmet, Enforcer's Battle Gloves, and Enforcer's Combat Greaves. And for the weapons, we will be able to complete the Ranger Set and the Crowlock Set, as the opposite transmogs are now going to be in the reward cache. First up is the Ranger's Instincts Repeaters. 
then the Ranger's Whims Chain Blades, the Crowlock Kill Glaive Sword, the real Crowlock Kill Cleaver Axe, the Crowlock Kill Crusher Hammer, the Crowlock Kill Stick Warpike, and the Crowlock Kill Mitts Strikers. Available in the style section are the title for the Enforcer, as well as a new Rustic die. And new to the Vault section is the Alchemy of War Hunt Pass, which includes the War Armor Set, the Mechatheric Armor Set, and the Arconic Weapon Set. And finally, the notable entries to the Platinum Store are the Do the Automaton Emote, the Light Sworn Weapon Skins for the Axe, Chain Blades, and Repeaters, the Middle Wings Glider and the Middle Blade Sword, the Light Sworn and Middle Star Lanterns, as well as the Ostian Commander General Armor Set, which I actually featured in the 1.7.0 update video, but it's just coming out now. But that about wraps it up for the 1.7.3 update. There are some other minor changes, but those are the main ones to look for. Thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, consider dropping that like for me, and consider subscribing if you are new. And once again, if you're thinking about making any cosmetic or otherwise purchases through Dauntless or Epic Games, consider using my supporter creator code, the Mr. Trails make sure the A is before the I. And I have been Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.